Hi everyone, Deacon Anthony CEO here. So as you know, we're doing this video series during Lent and it's called To Know, To Love, and To Serve. And um, in this video series, we're, we're speaking with parishioners. We're speaking with people that you know, faces that you'll recognize, and just asking them about uh, their faith life and, 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 and how their faith comes through in service to others. So today I have with me Mary Audio. Mary, thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, thank you for asking me. So Mary, the series again is called To Know, To Love, and To Serve. So let me just start by asking you uh, the first question, which is, how did you come to your faith? Well, when I was thinking about it, I, I thought I'd go back to my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was growing up, my mother and father were faith-filled people. We, we prayed the rosary together as a family. We always said grace before meals. And I saw my mother and father praying together uh, when there was a crisis in their family. And it made me realize that, you know, God was important. And we always went to church. We did it as, you know, my sister and I only have one sister. And we went to church with them. and. It was just how I felt my my faith began. And Catholic school was another thing that my family believed in very much. My mother and dad did not go to Catholic school, so they wanted to be sure that we got Catholic education. And I did, I went 12 years to the Catholic school and I believe that that gave me a good foundation for who God was. I went to high school, in a Catholic high school, and had the first experience to go to um, a retreat and on that retreat which I never never did before it made me feel that God was more present in my life and I thought well I'm wondering what God's asking me to do and that's what the question on the weekend was and I decided that I probably would like to be a teacher and teaching children and my first job that I did after I graduated from college as a teacher was in a Catholic school and I just totally loved it. There were second graders, there was a lot of them, but they were getting ready for their first communion, which to me was exciting back in those days too. And I got to see them form their little prayers and first go to Sacrament of Reconciliation, which she had big smiles. And so it made me think this is where I belonged and I truly like teaching. So that's, what I ended up doing, and for 30 years, I taught in the Catholic school. Uh, when I wasn't teaching in the Catholic school, I was teaching in the faith formation classes. So when I retired from teaching, I contacted my parish and see if they needed anyone for the faith formation. And Rose was delighted to have me. And so I decided that I would just start with teaching the grade that I felt comfortable with, which was third grade. And I did that for a couple of years. And then my grandchildren came along and they wanted me to teach them their classes. So I'm now doing both classes now, fourth grade and seventh grade. And I truly feel that this is God's calling me. And I found that that is the way that I can let other people, even as little kids, learn about God. Mm -hmm. Because some of them don't get that anywhere else. And so I feel I bring saints pictures, we talk about saints, we do all kinds of things, the rosary is big. So I feel like they're, that's where God is, and I feel God put me in that direction. Your faith formation started in your family, um, and the retreat kind of moved you into an understanding of where you were being called. And then you continued to grow in your faith over those years. Yes. And you have a great distinct advantage being able to grow in your faith by being constantly immersed in it by teaching in the Catholic school in that Catholic environment. That's really interesting. Now, during the time that you can start to uh, feel your faith and grow your faith, are there any examples, anything you can think of where you actually felt God's love for you in your life? Um. Actually, I think um, when I got to see three of my grandchildren born, 
and I remembered my mother saying that God will truly bless you and you have God's blessing if you live to see your children's children. And I think that was like God's telling me that, you know, he showed me extra love there because I got to see my children's children born. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now I see them, my family is around me all the time. I, all my family lives in Washington Township and we get to see each other every Sunday. We have big dinners and I get to see my grandchildren all the time. And it's just, a, I think that's God's blessing for me. And, they want me to teach them things. They want to pray with me. Mm -hmm. We have rosary at the family table, at the kitchen table. And I think that's the way God's telling me that a little extra love there is what you can give them. What you just said is really interesting also because you don't see that happening much anymore. That whole environment that you're speaking about around the dinner table, having the family together, that really doesn't happen as much as we'd like it to anymore. How, how do you keep that going? Well, my my husband came from a small family like I did mm -hmm. too. We didn't have a lot of children. And when we talked about how many kids we wanted to have, he, you know, we just both agreed we loved children. And so we continued to have, having them come over to me was like giving him that idea too mm -hmm. that they're always going to be around you. He was good with conversations and telling stories and, you know, Pop Pop used to be the, the center of their attention. Mm -hmm. And since he's no longer there, I thought, we still get together. They talk about him. We, you know, remember his birthdays with everybody celebrating at the table. And I think he would be happy to know that we're continuing to do that. And that family idea there was a big thing for us. The love that you've experienced you bring out to others, not just your family. I know you've done it in school as a teacher. Within your, within your daily life, do you have opportunities to bring that love to other people who are outside of your family? Um, well, sometimes, yeah, actually, yes. Um, I have a couple of friends that are going through some hard times and, you know, we get together and, and then they come to me with their needs and, mm -hmm. oh, can you pray for this? And will you be there for me? And, you know, and I have remember bringing communion home for my brother-in-law who was not able to get to church and my husband's brother-in-law, really. And, um, like, that made me feel like I, you know, was doing something for someone that they couldn't do for themselves. And so uh, Eucharistic minister is my, my wonderful feeling, too, for other people, and I, I do like that. I would like to get into visiting the hospitals now. Pandemic kind of put a little scare into me, but sure. it's opening up and I, I think the need is there. I hear the different ladies talking about how the people really need to see you. And I would like to do that because I know when my husband was in the hospital, they came and he talked about how nice that was to get communion and have just have conversation with people about what's going on. And they ask you about what's going on in the church so I think I would like to do that, so that's, that's my goal. So even with all the things that you do, you still feel called to be able to do more. And I think that's a great lesson. I think it's a great lesson for everyone um, because it doesn't stop you know, just because we're doing certain things and just because though we're, we're responding to God doesn't mean it stops. Um, we're still being called to do more with the gifts and talents that we've been given. And in listening to you, it sounds very clear that you're still listening to the call of being able to do more. You ever say to yourself, won't you stop, God? <laughs> stop calling me. Well, and, you know, it's, it's funny, too, because my, I have two daughters-in-law that are close to me. One lives right next door, one across the back. And my one daughter-in-law, who didn't have much of a religion growing up, um, wants to know more about the faith. And so she came to me first as, you know, somebody that she was going to marry my son. Would I, you know, help her to learn about the, what we do in our church? Mm -hmm. and, um, and she's, you know, somebody that really wanted to do with the family and be part of what we do. So I thought that was, you know, the Lord saying, you know, he chose her. She's got faith, but wasn't our faith. And she, well, you know, because you were the one that they went to. 
at my suggestion, told the deacon Anthony, because then you can learn a little bit more that I can't help you with. My other daughter-in-law was a Catholic, and she said she really didn't do much with her faith. Her family didn't do much either, and she did it on, off and on. She comes almost every Sunday with us now. But she said it's because you do things and it looks like that's where I belong to. So a couple of things in the family that are not family. They're just extended family, I guess. But they come and they, we did a dedication to St. Joseph when we had consecration to St. Joseph. I got books for everybody. We met every Sunday after Mass. We would have Mass here, come over for breakfast, take out the St. Joseph book and talk about it. And, she was so interested in the questions and so many things she wanted to learn. And she kind of used, you know, that as a chance to learn more about her faith. So I figure that's teaching in a way, but it's not teaching. Mary, one of the things that I often hear from people when we speak about evangelization, and that's really what you're speaking about, you know, in terms right now of sharing your faith and evangelizing. But one of the things... I hear from people is that they think evangelization is going out. I need to go out into the world to evangelize. And the answer to that is yes, we do. Uh, yes, we need to share our faith outside of our family. But I think that we can't downplay the importance of sharing our faith within our family. Um, you know, we, we, we hear the statistics about how many former Catholics there are, people who grew up Catholic who no longer attend church, who no longer have a faith to call their own. Um, evangelizing, evangelization, doing evangelization work within the family is critically important. And it sounds as though you've really wrapped your, your, your hands around that particular one uh, in terms of evangelizing within your family. Well, I feel that that's my whole idea is what you're saying, that mm -hmm. we have to reach everybody who is not coming to church in some way, either by word or by example, or, you know, gently mm -hmm. telling them things that they might want to hear. Um, I, when I brought my, I, this is just another little tidbit, but I brought my religious ed class over for adoration. And Father Steve did a beautiful job on Monday with the class, and but I teach it on Monday and Thursday. So he wasn't available, and I said, you know, we're going to do it. I talked about it in the center. Mm -hmm. We showed a little video of Matthew Kelly and we came over for adoration. They were wonderful. Mm -hmm. They some, some of them had never been there at all. And when we came back to the center, one of the little students said, I can't, I can't wait to see that up close because I made them stay in the back. I didn't want to disturb any of the parishioners. He said, I, I want to see, I want to see what's on that altar up close. I said, if you want to come on a Thursday, I'd be glad to take you. I don't teach it every Thursday, but I'll, be, I'll come with you and meet you here. He said, I'll ask my mom. And I thought, wow, that was some one little out of 15 kids mm -hmm. wanted to see a little bit more. So that's what we have to do, I think, is to bring it to them in a way that will be appealing to them. And we certainly have it in our parish. Yes. Father Steve, when he does his videos, I sign up all the time for him. Mm -hmm. When he was doing Zooms, when we had Zooms, I learned so much about the Book of Revelation mm -hmm. and Mary and the Blessed Mother's titles. And he, he has a way of doing that. And I would like everybody to know this is what our parish has to offer. So maybe this would be a way to do it. That's my way of evangelizing. Mm -hmm. The reason why we're doing this is that we can share with everyone some helpful ideas of how we can serve others. When we come to truly know God, when we come to love God and feel God's love, it pushes us out to serve. And it's not just a matter of serving out in the community or out to those people somewhere. We can serve within our own families. We can serve within our own parish. We can serve within our workplace. There's so many ways that we can bring the love of God to others. And I think you've helped us to really understand that today, Serena. Thank you very, very much. It's been a pleasure to have you, and uh, we'll talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you.